my organizational success doesn't hinge on me. It hinges on me empowering the right people for organizational success. Because if I could be the most motivated, best leader in the world, but if I have an organization more than three people, I can't affect everybody. So then it comes back to who do I put in charge as leaders? Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and you all know we we always find these just extraordinary people uh, to bring on the podcast and want to share with you all, because, of course, the premise of this show is to serve and support our student athletes to ultimately help them go beyond the ball so they can succeed beyond their degree. And like we like to focus on stories, strategies, and successes. So I'm I'm excited today, and and as I, you know, I'm excited when we bring on guests. But but this gentleman here, man, I, I connected with him a while ago, and I just been following his work, been really inspired uh, because th- this this is a gentleman who, I, I think the the best way to describe him, he is a, he's a builder of of world class teams. And I want to go ahead and bring him out. Want to go him and welcome him to the Beyond the Ball podcast, Mr. Jake Zwig. Jake, what's going on? How you feeling, Doc? (laughs) Crazy. Have me up in the back room. (laughs) Oh, man. You you know, I couldn't keep you back there too long because, I mean, you know, you probably would have got a little rowdy or something back there. I don't know. I might have (laughs) left. I appreciate it, man, Jonathan. Thanks for having me on. We're about to light some fire. You know, this whole Beyond the Ball podcast, I was sitting here and I was kind of thinking about what I was going to talk about. But just hearing you introduce me like that, now I know what we're going to talk about. So let us rip. Man, man. All right, well, with you saying that, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and kick kick the mic back to you. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and kick the mic back to you and, you know, just let just let you share share what's on your heart, let you share what you're thinking. Because I'm curious to hear myself. I'm, I'm here to learn. I got my whiteboard to the side, and I'm about to take some notes. So, so yeah. go ahead. Let, let's get into it, Jake. You know, beyond the ball, uh, it's so indicative of every college athlete out there. I don't care what, what what you do, what sport, you know, everybody's gonna finish playing ball at some point. And, you know, ball is just synonymous. You could be in a swimming pool, you could be on a gymnastics floor, you know, your sport's gonna end at some time. And I think that it's being missed in our culture these days, how big an impact going into the military as an officer for four years after you get done playing ball in college could be on your life. Mm -hmm. And I know I do a lot of mentorship with the military and, you know, I got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I got army Rangers. I got pilots. I got a guy getting ready to be the submarine captain of a nuclear submarine for the Navy. You know, I got, I got two guys at West point. I got a whole bunch of guys at the Naval Academy. I'm working on a couple other people. We got a whole bunch of people in the seal pipeline. But I don't think like, you know, big time athletes understand just how big an impact they can make on the troops in leadership and how much it'll help you grow as a human being to set yourself up for life success. Be that going back to business school, be that just staying in the military and killing it. You know, everybody thinks you're going to go fight in the military. Shoot, only 10 percent of the army goes to fight. So there's 90% of those people, officers out there that have never been in the war zone. So, you know, there's jobs. If you want to go fight, I tell everybody, you know, the football players love to mix it up. The wrestlers, you know, but let's say you're a tennis player and you got a little bit more finesse. I mean, you got public affairs. So, Hmm. you know, that's the thing that, you know, I'm going to try to bring all my questions from you and weave them into this whole huge opportunity for ballers to go into the military and really set their lives up. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't even, I didn't even really think about that. And I, and I I think that's one thing that a lot of people don't typically think about because we typically think about, you know, the individuals on the ground, the individuals going off to battle. And we, we don't think about just like you shared public affairs are so many other uh, of the roles and, you know, of these other potential duties and opportunities that individuals could take advantage of, just like you said, to set, set themselves up for, for like true leadership success. So, wow, you already, you already got me going, Jake. 
Yeah, man, John, I'll tell you, big deal, man. You know, and deal is, you know, I, I'm going to find the guys that want to fight for the jobs that need to fight, right? The mm -hmm. Army Rangers, the Green Berets, the Navy SEALs. But let's say you're a real smart person, you know? I'm out there, I'm hunting for a bunch of females right now. I need a bunch of females to put in these pilot planes in the Navy. So I'm going, you know, I'm going, I'm going to soccer players. I'm going to, to, to all Big Ten, all Pac-12, all ACC, all SEC soccer players, swimmers. You know, I'm going after the best of the best who got good grades because, believe it or not, flying airplanes is physical, but it's more about them books, learning those systems, learning the procedures for a lost engine, like all of that stuff. So, you know, so much opportunity for athletes. And, and, and you know, I'm always going back to my number one characteristic. They got to be a competitive SOB, man. They got to want to rip your face off in tiddlywinks and pitch and toss. Mm. How does one build that mindset, though, to, to be a competitive SOB? Or or is it is it something that's innate? So, you know what's interesting, man? I got three kids. I got three boys. And the oldest one likes to compete. The middle one, he's okay. But the baby, yo, five-year-old savage. Okay? <laughs> So I'm going to say part of it is innate and part of it's learned, right? Like I, I, I got in trouble yesterday because I got him to school second. So today we lucked up and I was smiling because I was in the line dropping off my oldest kid in school. And I saw the lady that drops off the young kid, Wale, and, he, and she was behind us. So I knew we would be first. <laughs> first thing little man said when he walked in the door, he said, Daddy, I'm first today i am the first kid to get to school you can't i i trust me on this one i ain't do nothing to get that out of me so i think it's a little bit of innate you know obviously i'm gonna breed competition you know you got to fight in this house to live flat out you know oldest kid gets beat up all the time he gonna figure it out eventually you know we just try to keep him from getting beat up too bad mm, yeah 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 so were you were you one of the ones to where it was innate for you, like to like to be a leader and be a competitor, or was this something that you you know you eventually cultivated? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to lean towards my five year old. My wife tell me all the time that that's me. So <laughs> I can remember being a kid, man. I didn't care what it was, I wasn't losing, you know. And um, from the from that perspective, like I had it, like I even to this day, like if I'm gonna compete, I'm gonna win um now it's just different right like now it's long-term winning life leadership uh the leadership part i didn't truly understand leadership uh really until after the naval academy i was a phenomenal leader coming up all through the ranks i just didn't understand how to use my superpower i didn't understand how to empower others and and get my message across to truly lead right like my big deal is about leadership. I'm a servant leader. I, I lead by following and supporting my people. And now, you know, I've had so many leadership opportunities and, and just world-class experiences. I know, like, I, my organizational success doesn't hinge on me. It hinges on me empowering the right people for organizational success. Because if I could be the most motivated, best leader in the world, but if I have an organization more than three people, I can't affect everybody. So then it comes back to who do I put in charge as leaders? Who do I cultivate leadership in? Who do I empower to make decisions to affect the organization? So all of that was learned. Um, you know, the competitiveness has been there since day one, but the actual leadership part of it, a lot of it was learned. Cut, cut my teeth in leadership early on the USS Merrimack, an oiler. Um, what I thought was cool was not cool and what was effective was not effective, but, you know, I'm gonna find a way to win. So I made the corrections and, and shoot the rest of it was steaming Willie Beeman. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, <clears throat> so when we talk about like, just, just seals, right. When we talk about Navy seals, this is a, this is a different type of individual, Right. Or, 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 at least, or at least that that's my association. You know, when, when I think of Navy SEALs, I, I think of you, I, I think of David Goggins. And I mean, there's not many others that, that I know at this point. Right. So what does it take for one? And, and I know that there's certain requirements, 
but outside of the the requirements that that we know but what does it really take for one to become a navy seal so there are really two factors um right now navy seals is really hard to do so everybody in this country want to be a navy seal i want to be a navy seal you got a bunch of guys out there that can run really fast and swim really fast but they're not even close to having the grit so i tell everybody like the most important factor is the grit like your your tenacity and your ability to just absorb massive amounts of damage, okay? But the bottom line is now it's become so sexy in America to become a Navy SEAL that it's hard to get there. Like in the officer pipeline, you're talking about two years to get to SEAL training, two years to get there. Mm -hmm. Enlisted pipeline is backed up a year right now, nine months to a year. So if you sign up today, you ran a nine, or you ran, let's say you ran an eight minute mile and a half, which you know is flying, and you swam an eight minute mile and a half, and you did 100 pull ups, I'm sorry, 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, and you did like 25, 30 pull ups. Hmm. You still would have to wait a year to get there. That's and true. so the Navy SEAL aspect of it, you know, you asked me kind of what, what's it take? I mean, you give me a tough football player in division, you know, any division, give me a tough football player. He'll be fine. You know, I got a linebacker from Finley. That's Army Ranger right now. I got, you know, one of my other linebackers from Catholic 15 years ago was an Army Ranger. Um, I don't have any of my any of my young dudes. I got a lacrosse player that's a Navy SEAL. I got a triathlon dude that's a Navy SEAL. And I got three wrestlers that are Navy SEALs. Oh, and I got a, a pitcher, a, a big lefty pitcher is a Navy SEAL. But, you know, it come back to grit. Do you like to fight? Like one of my best questions, Jonathan, is I ask you, when's the last time you've been in a fist fight? Mm. Man, high school. High school, right? You ain't one of them scrappy dudes. You know what I'm saying? So then I'd automatically put you in that airplane or put you <laughs> on that ship. Because you ain't one of them dudes that like to mix it up. You know, I love my best response is, oh, I've never been in a fight. You do understand your job is to shoot people in the face, correct? Mm. Well, I, I was hoping I could be the medic and I could fix people. Like, yeah, you ain't cut out for this life, son. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a pirate lifestyle, man. This ain't no, you know, everybody got these sexy opinions from all these movies and stuff. I try to tell people, man, go back to the 1600s and the 1700s on a pirate ship. That's how you live it. Rough, mm -hmm. rugged, and raw, like period. And that's what people don't understand, man. They, they think it's some glamorous ass job, man. I tell everybody, you digging a ditch, man. It's hard. Dang. So you think they think it's sexy because the movies and just and just seeing the seals dressed up or suited and booted, you think that that that's like painting this picture? Look, man. All I can say is they, you know, this generation. Who I hear talking about? I just heard somebody talking about this. Oh, Goggins. I just listened to Goggins this morning. He was talking about it. This generation sees social media and believes that they are they are that person, right? Like everybody's mm -hmm. living vicariously through people on social media. So they're like, oh man, that dude's doing this. And what they really doing is they seeing the trappings that everybody on social media is getting, right? Like they seeing David Goggins. David Goggins got unlimited money at this point, right? And they're like, oh, I'm going to go be David. I'm going to go be Jocko Willing, right? Like, I'm going to go, mm -hmm. I'm going to start. And then, but they don't understand the grind of the every day to even have a chance to go. Mm -hmm. You know, like my run program, you know, I got a run program I give out for free. Shoot, we running twice a, twice a day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, once a, once a day on Tuesday and Thursday. And then we got a long run, you know, 8 to 12 miles on Saturday every week. So if you ain't you ain't about that life, and I ain't talking about the swimming, we got swimming six, uh, five, 10 times across five days. You're going to swim twice a day, Monday to Friday, every day. You know, you're going to do 30 minutes of abs. You're going to do some pull-ups, sit-ups, and push-ups, and, and we rolling, man. But, like, that's the bare minimum, mm. you know? You get the SEAL teams. Shoot, I got to do right now in the SEAL team, get ready to go to some awesome training. And I, I I called him, and so he called me back. He said, look, Jake, I'm, I'm at work right now. It was Saturday at like 8 o'clock at night. I said, what's going on? He said, man, you know I'm going to school next week. I got to get ready. I said, don't call me back until you get done with school. 
because that dude that dude understands what it takes to be successful. He ain't got time to talk to nobody on the phone. But trying to explain that to some people is hard when they think, oh, I, you know, like my best one is I made it through hell week. Jake, I graduated hell week. Really? That's week five of training. Training is two and a half years long. And then you still get to the SEAL teams and train for another two years. And then you you continually in the training cycle. So I, I don't know why you thought you was going to make it when you made it through hell week on week five. And you still got probably mm, 65% of the attrition after that. Oh, wow. But that's what like, and, and here I'm gonna I'm a come back and say this too. I don't want everybody to believe it's an impossible dream. It's not impossible if you came up the right way. If you a Division One wrestler, if you a tough person, if you know you've been through a ton of adversity and hard work in your life, it won't be that hard. Like I tell everybody, you give me a Division One wrestler, I'll make you a Navy SEAL in four months. Because they understand that life, right? Like, like not even mm-hmm. Division One. Just give me a college wrestler who is good. I don't want the dude that went 0 and 30. I want the guy that, you know, had a winning record that's tough, that understands how to beat other people on the mat. And it could be a woman, too. Like, I'm getting ready to, to go yard on these females in the military. And I've already talked to a couple of Division One wrestling teams. I'm going straight to the women's wrestling team. I'm going to give me some savages. Mm-hmm. Man. Man, so you said something earlier about 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 this generation, and I and I mean I just got to ask you, why do you think that that people aren't aren't successful, right? And I'm I'm, I'm saying people because of course we can talk about athletes, but I think when we say people, athletes fall in this category as well. But why why are some people not successful, Jake? I'm gonna tell you why why 99 percent of the people in the world aren't successful. They don't want it bad enough, right? Mm-hmm. I liken it to that guy. You seen that that guy that got trapped by the rock, had to cut off his arm to survive. Mm. I guarantee you, he's probably one in a thousand. Nine hundred and ninety nine people would have died right there with their arm trapped in that rock. But he was different. He wanted to live more than he was worried about his arm, right? So when you ask me why people don't succeed, they're not willing to cut their arm off to get where they want to go. And that's just a metaphor for life, right? Like, I tell people, man, like, I was a disadvantaged youth even when I checked into the Naval Academy. I couldn't read and write, okay? So for me to pass, I had to pass the writing test to, to qualify to go to business school, right? The GMAT. Mm-hmm. And so I studied for, for five months, no less than four hours a day, eight hours on Saturdays and Sundays for that test. I was in the middle of a SEAL workup and studying my behind off. And as much as I tried to pass the writing requirement, I couldn't pass it, okay? You got to get, roughly, you got to get a four or above. When I took the practice, practice exams, I was getting a one. Mm. so i said hey sometimes you just got to apply brute force to problems that require brute force if i can't write well enough to pass this test well then let's skin this cat a different way so i memorized three thousand word essays word for word and then i went into the test and i and i took one of those essays that fit the nouns fit and I regurgitated that essay word for word on the GMAT and just changed the noun. Okay. I didn't change the context. I didn't change nothing. Got five points, 5.5 out of six on the GMAT writing requirement. But I, it took me three months to remember 3,000 word essays. And I only used two of them. Mm-hmm. I had a backup. I had a spare. That's what I'm talking about. Everybody, like, I got all these kids hit me up about being Navy SEALs. When's the last time you ran? Well, it's it's winter. Uh, <laughs> September. Okay? Because this generation has the internet mentality. I'm tough on the internet. I can tweet whatever I want. I got freedom of speech. But they don't have go out in the front yard and run around with the neighbors. Like, I live in this big neighborhood. 
I have yet to see an organized game on any of the fields in our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. They, they, no one wanted to go outside, right? No one, like they don't live that active lifestyle. Now you got exceptions to that, but not, I mean, this generation just Twitter and Instagram, right? Like, like I'm getting tired of people on Instagram, you know, like my wife tell me it's a trap. Like you click on one cute girl on Instagram and then you flooded with all these women just, <laughs> you know, they posing. But the first thing I say is like, like there's no substance to the to the pictures. Like, what are you really doing? You got a million followers because you built real nice. But what's going to happen in 10 years when you have a couple kids and you're not built that nice, but but you literally made a living for 10 years on on, on your face and everything else, right? Now, there's some people that have transitioned from that to other things. But for me, we become a real shallow culture with real shallow fight in us. Like, you know, you hear a lot of people using the P word, uh, the occasion of America, right? Mm-hmm. And I can't be a stronger believer in that, man. Like, now, gr- that being said, let China or somebody come over here and try to invade us. That'll change in a couple minutes. But right now, as a society, you can't have a fight in school. Kids getting suspended for, you know, expelled from school for a little tussle in third grade. Come on, man. So you ask me why people ain't successful. They ain't want to cut their arm off when they trapped up against a rock. And life is that rock. Golly. Golly, Jake. <laughs> oh, man, that's real. Golly, that's so real. So as, so as as we're just talking talking about, you know, success and 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 I'm I'm curious just just to hear from you because we were talking about life and, and 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 you're a Navy SEAL, but you've been able to integrate back into in, I don't want to call it the real world, but being, uh-huh. you know, go, going from being <laughs> going from being a Navy SEAL and then you know being being integrated, you know, through I guess society. Like, can 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 you just talk about that? Like how because I mean I know with with everything that you do, I I know you do it with with excellence, and I know you just do everything just at an elite level so you know now when you're when you're you go from over here you know navy seals and training and combat to being where we are now like i mean i just want to hear your like your thoughts on that and what what you see in and just just talk to me a little bit about that so let me let me say this i don't have no combat but i've been shot before Mm. I tell everybody that I, I I stepped out right before the war started. I was really mad. I didn't step back in. Okay, so I'm going to give you that correction right there so no one tried to shoot no darts at me. Um, you know, here's what I'm going to tell you, man. I struggled the first 10 years out, and it really didn't struggle. I've always been this dude, right? I've always been a fringe guy. I live in my own world. I do what I do. I don't worry about public opinion. I find a way to win, right? Like I told you a story about memorizing 3,000 word essays. I'm not going to fail. And what I've learned over the course of my life is that upsets pretty much about 50% of the population because they don't have that that mechanism in their body to always win. And so um, in 2011, I started going to these meetings, which have really helped me out a lot. And what they've really done is up my capacity for BS in the workplace. Hmm. So if someone is full of crap, I just let them be full of crap. I don't give them my opinion, right? If I don't like somebody, I don't tell them I don't like them. Old me would be like, look, man, you suck. I'm tired of you doing dumb stuff. Like, you know, my my go-to was I'm going to smash your face in, man. And so I've had a couple instances where people really got scared. And, you know, my best example, uh, I was on a TV show, uh, Top Shot, right? And the whole thing was rigged. It was dirty, dirty TV. And they had all these little 21-year-olds that was like kind of your handlers. And I remember this little dude was yelling at me to get in the van. And I had to tell him, I said, listen, bud, I said, I don't know who you think you're talking to. I might be on this TV show, but if you ever raise your voice to me again, I'm going to slap you down to the ground. So next thing I knew, the producer showed up, like, did you threaten him? I said, yeah, I threatened him. I said, you talk to me crazy. You, you warned a threat. I said, there was no action. I said, but if he does it again, we're going to have a problem. And I'm not, you know, I'm not physical. I'm not getting physical with nobody, but 
I'm not going to let no little 21-year-old kid yell at me and tell me to get my butt in the van and talk down to me. No one's going to talk down to me. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much power you have. The minute you try to talk down to me, you're going to see an insurrection. And you don't want insurrection out of me because it ain't you not winning that one. So, you know, it's just one of them deals, man. Like, now I'm 49. I'm playing long ball. You know, I've been riding. I've always been a play chess, not checkers guy. Mm -hmm. Like, life is chess, and if you're playing checkers, you're losing. So, you know, that's why I'm making this move over to Amazon. We'll go over to Amazon, deliver packages, have a whole delivery van system, you know, company. I'm a sling packages, SF, you know, on time, on target. We're going to roll. So I'll get this built, you know, some, some good stuff happened to me last time I was in San Antonio. So I'm not worried about it, man. I'm in a really good place out here hustling, you know, trying to find my way. Got about mm, 10 opportunities. My wife said it to me yesterday. She said, Jake, how many irons in the fire right now? And I started talking. She's like, yeah, because I sit at this computer where I'm at right now. I'll sit here until 11 o'clock, get up. At, I get up, take kids to school, and then I'm at this computer for 13, 14 hours a day grind. Mm. So, Man. Yeah, I mean, I've seen you got like a lot of stuff going on. So talk a little bit about uh, talk a little bit about what you got going on now, Jake. I mean, because I've seen you do the speaking and I've seen I think you you you, you got some courses going on. Talk, talk a little bit about that just to. You know, shine, shine some light on that. Cause I think you have some pretty, uh, pretty dope offerings. So like I got, I got a spreadsheet right now with 1400 people that want to be Navy SEAL special forces. And I got 450 minorities on that list. And so I've really been trying to multiply myself, but I can only answer the phone so much. So I built this Navy SEAL masterclass, which in my opinion, if you want to be a Navy SEAL, and you don't you don't sign up for my master class, like you you are the silliest person in the world, because this literally I built this master class based on every conversation that I have with one of my mentees from the time I get them to about six months after they've checked into their SEAL team. So we talking about in in all actuality we talking about four years of conversations in a master class. And so, you know, I'm sitting here, my video guy is getting it done and, and it's a lot of videos. So I kind of wore him out, but he, he gave me first phase. So I got pre-training up there right now. And I got the PST training, the physical standards test. So those two parts up there and I got a uh, part of first phase up here. I was watching some videos last night, like, dude, like this ain't even, like I, I put it on Instagram. This ain't even, plat uh, this ain't even gold. It's straight platinum. Like it's, like you listen to my videos and do what I tell you to do, you're gonna be successful. There's no, there's no chance you can fail if you listen to all of my videos. Go to Buzz with the right mindset, you're gonna be fine. Because like I tell everybody, the the value of my masterclass is in what you learn how to learn, mm. so how to learn, and then we tackle the whole mental side of everything. Like like. There's no stone unturned in this thing. So anyway, we got the master class out there at jakeswig.com. We killing that. Um, we got a whole bunch of diversity and inclusion stuff going down. So mm. I found out this summer, I'm running the only diversity and inclusion program that's successful in the United States government. Like flat out. Like now that it's out there, I don't care. Like I made seven African-American SEAL officers in the last 10 years. I, I, I raised the diversity in the SEAL teams by 300%, okay, mm -hmm. in the officer community. And so now everybody calling me across the government, everybody calling me. I've taken a couple corporate calls. But see, here's my deal. I'm not a diversity and inclusion guy. I'm a success guy. Mm. So I pre, you know, a lot of diversity and inclusion people get upset because I tell them, I don't, I, have no, I don't really care about diversity. So all I care about is I hire non-biasedly and I promote non-biasedly. I only hire superstars and I only promote superstars. That's all I care about. And I said, when you can do that functionally, you are left with this awesome pool of diverse candidates. Like my number one superstar right now, she don't, I don't even talk to her. 
She's in the 10th grade. This is her 10th grade year right now. She got straight A's, first generation immigrant from India. She's about four foot tall, maybe 80 pounds. She don't know this, but I'm giving her a college scholarship. As soon as I get this company up and running the first order of business, when I got an extra $50,000, I'm giving her a college scholarship. And I'm, I'm going to ensure her that I will pay for college. Okay. But the caveat of it is she got straight A's. So what I'm really going to do is I'm going to ensure she get a scholarship to college. And then we will be able to help her in her quest to become, she want to become an orthopedic surgeon. Okay, well, let's roll. But like, I didn't pick her because she was Indian. I picked her because she's a superstar. And that's what's missed. So I got all this diversity and inclusion stuff. We work with some corporate people. I've given a bunch of talks. You know, I'm doing some public speaking right now. That ain't really, you know, I just like fire to stuff. You want me to come speak? I like fire to it. Um, but my wheelhouse is just, you know, this big mentorship program that I got going on with making military officers, pilots, you know, Rangers, SEALs. Um, we've just been killing that, that, that arena we've been killing for the last 15 years. It just, I kind of had it in a box. So no one knew about it, but now it's out. You know, we're going to see where that leads. I've taken a ton of phone calls from people across the government talking about, they really need some help, but you know, I tell everybody, I'm get, I'm not going to come work with you unless we're going to be successful. And so a lot of people, like the two corporate people I had that called me, they got a little shook because I told them how the program worked. And they were like, well, we were hoping you could just come in and give some talks and kind of talk to the senior leader C-suite guys about, you know, how to better do this. Now, that ain't how this works, partner. You're not putting my name on nothing that ain't going to just straight smash faces in and change the culture of your company top down and inside out. So, you know, I don't, you know, I don't need, I don't need their money. So it's like, Hey, either you want to play, or you know, you know, man, Jake, man, I love it. I love it. And, you know, just, just before I, I, I let you get out of here, man, you, you on, you on beyond the ball. So I gotta, I gotta run you through the two minute drill, man. I gotta run you through the two minute drill and, and Jake, the two, two minute drill is just an opportunity. We, we have a, have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna ask you a handful of rapid fire questions. And then, you know, I, I want you to once again, share where the people can find you and connect with you. Uh, and then I'll let you, uh, I'll, I'll let you be on your way. So hang on, man. Hang on. Hang on. We got rapid fire. Let me go get my, my machine gun. Oh no, nah. we ain't we ain't doing that rapid fire. Hey, I just want to make sure, you know what I'm saying? I can't come to a gun, I can't come to a gunfight with a stick. All right, what you got, uh, let, let, let it rip, man. Uh, oh man. Oh man. Uh, I, I I have to say this is the first time anybody's ever had to go, you know, had, had to go reach down and you know have to have to grab some have to grab some some Amen. artillery. So we're we're good. Amen. We're good. I'd rather be a thousand times prepared than one second unprepared, right? Hey, never hey. know. You never know what's gonna come through. You you might have some new technology. You materialize in my office. I had to get that bow and arrow right there off that wall and poke a hole in. <laughs> That's where I'm always going. I'm always going to poke holes, man. I'm always like like my big thing is like always be ready. Always be you. ready. Oh man, I got you. I got you, man. Let's do this rapid fire. So you put a hole in me. Let's get this rapid fire out the way. So here, 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 here we go. Here we go. Uh, your your favorite food? Mm, pizza. What kind of pizza? Uh, right now, probably Papa Dell's right here in Champaign would be my number one. Number one pizza in the world though is a little dive spot up there in Ann Arbor, in in between some beauty salons, uh, right over there on State Street. So that's my spot. Okay, okay. Um, what's your favorite Netflix show of preference? Man, don't watch a lot of TV, to be honest with you. Uh, we banged a little house of cards. You know, I try to spend some time with my wife in the evening, but I don't, we don't watch a lot of TV. At least I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of time for TV in my life. So I don't watch a lot of stuff. Um, maybe watch a movie every now and then. You know, I'm going to go to my, my number one movie is Top Gun. My number two movie is Armageddon. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, what's the last book you read? Uh, I'm reading The Stress Effect right now. Hmm. So, okay. uh, Henry Thompson, a uh, former SOG warrior, and it, it's an awesome book, man. It, uh, it, 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 it explains deeper my philosophies on leadership and how I'm able to find leaders. 
And so it, it, I didn't think that's what the book was going to be about, but that's what it's about. So like, I'm getting ready to reach out to him and have some conversations with him. So that's the last book I can. We're going to talk about books. I got to tell everybody to read Overachievement. And then this is the Ball Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm going to tell everybody on this podcast, if you don't go out and get Tim Grover's book called Relentless, mm. read that book. You ain't true to yourself. You ain't a true baller. You ain't going hard enough in the paint. Because when you read that book, it will change your opinion on what you have to do to become the best. Mm, That's good. That's good. You read that book, Jonathan? You read it? I I, I got it right over there. I got it right. I I asked you, Jonathan. I I have not read it yet. I'm going to go read it. And after I read it, I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to send it to you. And I'm going to say, you better do that. Cause I'm going to tell you, you can't run a beyond the ball podcast. If you ain't read that book, I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. That that is the realest book in the world. Like it literally is my number one book for athletes, period. Hmm. Used to be Dan Gable's book or Bruce Lee's book. Not even close. Relentless by Tim Grover. And I ain't, he ain't paying me for no promotion. I'm just giving you gold. It's 100 percent true. I got you. I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read it, and I'm, and I'm gonna give you a little write up. I'm gonna give you a little write up about it, just so you know I read it. Oh, hey, man. Uh, let me tell you this, Jonathan. I know this is your podcast, and I'm, I'm blowing you up right now. You okay. won't have to give me anything, cause when I see you, I'll know. That's how mm. powerful that book is. You gonna, you gonna have a different bite in your jaw when you read that book. Fair enough. Got two more questions for you. Two more questions. What's your What's your favorite podcast? Oh man, hmm. Whoo! So here's what I'm gonna say to that. I'm a big learn guy. So Gary V. Uh, I listen to Jocko for entertainment, and then Ed Milet, mm-hmm. Grant Cardone, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna throw this in there. Just a little bit of that beyond the ball. Just a little bit. Okay, we'll take it. We'll take it. We appreciate the love. And then last question, what's what's one tip that you want to give to a student athlete? Uh, hey, my biggest tip to every student athlete out there is make sure your grades are correct. Cuz ball's going to end and life is going to arrive. And if you ain't graduated from college or you had really bad grades in high school, you had really bad grades in college, you're going to find yourself working on a damn trash truck, man. Now, ain't nothing wrong with trash truck employees. I got a dude that make 120 in LA, family friend, running trash truck. I don't know about you. I ain't go to college to run no trash truck. So make sure your grades are good. Make sure you're doing your business in school because at the end of the day, ball going to be over. You could tell me you're going to go to the NFL, you're going to the NBA, you're going to play on the PGA. That's great. Lifespan in the NFL right now is about 10 months. Do your research. If you take out the top 10% of all NFL players, longevity-wise, lifespan in the NFL is less than 10 months right now. So you tell me how long you're going to be in the league and how much money you're going to make. Ooh. Jake, lastly, let them know where they can find you, where people can connect with you, how they can get access, access to your course and your content, everything that you're doing. So everything I'm doing is on jakeswig.com, uh, easy day. If you Google Jake Swig, you're going to find YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, my email, and my phone number are all over the place. Um, if you call me and I don't know who you are, I'm just going to tell you, you send me an email. So, you know, it's crazy. People are like, how you put your phone number on the internet? I said, look, I don't have crazy people calling me. I don't. So everything's out there, man. Just, you know, get on that phone, get on the internet, get on email. If you can't find me, you ain't looking for me. Mm. There it is. There it is, man. Jake, I, I want to let you know, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to, to, to hop on. And I have so much respect for, for what you're doing and so much respect uh, for you just as an individual. And you already know if there's anything I can do, if any connections I can make, you already know. Let me know, my man. Absolutely, man. Keep up the good work, because I think all these ballers need to hear what you're talking about, because life is so much bigger than the sport you're playing right now. And it's hard to see that when you were young. You know what I mean? When you in high school and college, man, I lived for football and wrestling in college. And knowing what I know now, I might not even play college sports and got my aerospace engineering degree instead of computer science. So mm-hmm. really appreciate the love you you spreading out here, Jonathan. Keep up the good work. And shoot, you want to have me back, I'll be glad to come. I just hope your listeners don't get wore out too bad. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> my man, my man. All the ballers out there, all the ballers out there. I, I want everybody to shoot. Man, y'all need to shoot Jake a DM and let him know what part of the episode really inspired you, what part of his story really just spoke to you. And man, or you can just reach out if you want him just to just to get at you. But uh, <laughs> But, but but honestly, y'all, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I want to encourage you, wherever you listen to podcasts, be sure to subscribe. Uh, be sure to leave a rate and review. And until next time, I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.